Hey guys, so um, recently my December, January art extravaganza, multi-post uh, extravaganza went up on the blog and um, it's February and I figured I would show you guys what I'm working on and rather than scanning a bunch of stuff that I don't actually need, I'm just going to go and show it to you through video. Because you guys seemed seemed to like the last one, although uh, I didn't really hear back from you guys. I was mostly just checking how many subscribers I gained after the video. Um, I really want you guys to talk to me. Um, don't be scared. I don't bite, and I'm usually pretty nice, unless you're a jerk. And then I'll still be pretty nice, but um, I will definitely set you straight if you're making inaccurate uh, assumptions about me. So, in general, I'm nice. Just don't make uh, assumptions about me. <laughs> so, I'm skipping everything that I showed in the January sketch dump on my blog. Because um, I'm just going to assume you guys have seen that. And if you're interested, you'll have looked it up. Or you can look it up right now, right? Uh, <laughs> it's there. It's not changing. And I'm just going to focus on stuff that is new so um this is new old it's uh i wanted to do a cute every year i want to do this and every year i don't i want to do like commemorative somethings to like like ornaments kind of except for the new year um and i have a 2005 one that i haven't done anything with and here's the 2006 one and i really ought to get rolling i don't expect anybody else to be interested in those they're just more for me and then, oh no, I lost my tab. Let me put that back on. These Daiso tabs are cute as heck, but they are not sticky enough. They just like pop off any chance they get. So next are some self portraits that I'm still needing to ink. And um, these were drawn with non-photo blue lead. Uh, this is the brand I use. This is the, the mechanical pencil I use. It's actually made for that lead. I've tried other mechanical pencils and I still like this one best. And you can get this on Amazon. Check my description for the links for that. Oh, see, I lost my other, there it is. Like I lost that other tab. So here we're finally on sketches that are not included in the sketch dump and um i like to draw with prismacolor pencils in various kind of earth hues they tend to get used to nubbins and when i'm not busy with ten thousand other things i'll usually do a page of warm -up, warm ups every day like these yoga sketches here and i find that doing these sort of warm ups it's uh really good for like limbering up your hand and um, a lot of drawing ability, especially people who draw really quick or can draw on demand, like convention artists, for example, it's muscle memory. So it's doing the exercises every single day. For me, if I go too long, like three days without doing it, I completely, like I have to start from scratch. So vacations are very frustrating for me because like everyone else is like, well, you should be taking time off. You shouldn't be drawing. Don't worry about that. And it's like, no, you don't understand. When you go back to work, you're not starting from scratch. I am. So these are some um, clothing concepts for 7-inch Kara. I've been watching a lot of um, BBC uh, like uh, recreations. So these were from Secrets of the Castle. Also from Secrets of the Castle. Still Secrets of the Castle inspired. Back to yoga poses. And um, I don't actually have a particular resource for the yoga poses. I literally just Google yoga poses and then I draw what I see. I also like to draw my main character, Kara, in various cute outfits that may or may not ever make it into the comic. And, um, you know, when it's like late at night and you're not really ready for your drawing day to be over, but you don't feel like thinking too much and you don't feel like starting something new, I like to take Japanese emoticons and interpret them as, emo like, drawn emotions. And it's better if I don't know what the emoticon actually means because I'm more likely to, to give it my own spin. 
More cute Kara stuff. Some concepts for a pitch. Um, and I actually have a video where I am showing you guys how I ink wash. And that's the pitch. And I'll show you the finished in a few minutes. More drawings for that pitch. More yoga poses. More cute Kara doodle stuffs with... Uh, with Prismacolor color pencils, messing around with various uh, Fude pins. I was I did a demonstration video. Some cute inks that I need to do a marker test with. I just haven't yet. Um, this is going to be my brush out uh, test soon. Like that's the, the the pencils for that. Here are my hourly comics. Um, hourly comic day is February 1st every year and you draw one comic for every hour that you're awake so that's my first three and I actually cheated um, what I do is I'm so like concerned that I'm gonna get wrapped up in something and just disappear not make a comic for a few hours that I pretty much uh, make a comic every time I switch activities so that's 10 10 50 11 10 that's like three in one hour 12 1240 1 30 2 2 13 so yeah every time I switch activities and a lot it's a lot of comic stuff because like what else does a comic artist do on hourly comic day especially if it's a working day other than make comics so three four o'clock five six seven eight o'clock nine ten eleven and I ended my day at 11. I didn't draw myself going to bed. I figured um, since I was doing it more than once an hour, I was probably good. So more yoga warm-ups, more expression practice, some Undertale doodles because I recently started playing that and uh, I love Toriel. She's our mom and I don't want to give any spoilers so I'm going to shut up. Uh, inks, or, I'm sorry, pencils for a future ink test. Back with that non-photo blue that really doesn't photograph well. More pencils. Planning stuff for my Patreon, which recently launched. Ah, sartorialist warm-ups. Chibi inks that were penciled with non-photo blue and then inked with a regular Fude pen because I'm going to scan these and do digital coloring on them. More Chibi inks. More pencils for an upcoming ink test. And that's it with this sketchbook. So I'm going to put it to the side. This is an Aqua B uh, watercolor sketchbook, which I am filling up so I can review it. TLDR, I don't like it. Um, but it does have some cute stuff in it that I'm going to work on. Uh, I actually did a video of this as my Valentine's present to my YouTube vid watchers. Um, and unfortunately, even though I recorded it early, it's still being edited and it's past Valentine's Day. So, so my apologies. Uh, I really could use an assistant. Um, more cute inks. So, um, one of the things I also like to do for fun is, um, draw my character in sort of a line style, like, uh, the texting app for phones, the line app. I like doing, like, fake stickers that I then watercolor. They're just really cute. Uh, I'm having trouble, not in this book yet, but in my Strathmore book, I'm having a lot of trouble scanning them because the paper gets all warped. This was me messing around with Kuratake uh, Tambi Gansai. Is it Gansai? Well, 
Kuretake watercolors, that big set everyone is raving about. Um, I'd been given a set of 36 as a Christmas present. I'm still playing around with them. They're not as saturated as I would like, but I have a review that you guys can unlock if you back my Patreon, and so you can find out what I think about them. Um, and another cute little Kara illustration. Oh, and a doodle of a key lime pie I enjoyed a few days ago because I love drawing food. And that, oh, and a sketch for a thing involving my cat and the space heater. And there is a Kara doodle that I'm going to marker. For you guys like a marker tutorial and I just need to get around to doing it more Kara stuff Kara on fluid paper because I want to practice uh, negative painting and this is a test for pro art uh, watercolor postcards I'm not super excited about them though because a preliminary test I did uh, they just handle watercolor really funky. And um, an upcoming tutorial on Canton artboard, Canton Montval artboard for, um, I'm gonna do Copic and watercolor, like a video demonstration. I've done a couple blog posts about that, but sometimes I think video is like the best way to go for a lot of people. Now, here are those pitches I was telling you guys about. Now, what happened with these is they liked the art, but I'd also submitted a story, and they like to break up. Um, I'm a writer and an artist. I usually do my own stuff. The anthology I pitch to breaks that up. They, um, so if you're a writer artist, they're going to pair you either with a writer or with an artist. Like You don't get to do it all yourself, which is fine. I knew that going in. That's not a complaint. It's just different from what I normally do. I usually do all my own stunts. Um, so they didn't go with my art, which is fine, because they wanted to go with my story, so I'm working with an artist, and that's exciting and unusual, because usually I'm on the artist end, and I really feel like as an artist that we get the short end of the stick with a lot of these things, because it's really like at least six times more work than writing, truthfully. It's so much more work, um, and we're just kind of expected to like grin and bear it. Um, so it's exciting to be on the writing, writing end and not on the, the labor end. I mean, the writing is still going to be work and um, I want to help my artist as much as I possibly can. So I have to dig up a bunch of photos and I have some sketches and I was going to um, do some layouts to help her out. Um, Cause I want to make it as easy as possible. I want to like even out that distribution of labor between the writer and the artist. So, I mean, I'm, still going to have work to do, but it's still a lot easier than drawing everything. So they liked them, but they're not using them, which means they can go in my Louisiana book that I'm working on, which is fun by me. And then I have been doing a bunch of marker tests and um, just given the nature of how things are handled for the channel right now, because there's only two of us and my editor isn't a full time. He doesn't want to be doing that full time. We're looking at hiring an assistant. Um, to help with editing. Uh, so there's like a backlog on these, but what I've, I've been doing is I've been like systematically testing various papers with various types of markers. So this is Copic PM paper, and these are um, Zig Brushables and Zig Art and Graphic Twin on this paper. And they kind of handle like Copics, but you guys should consider subscribing to the channel if you're not yet because those videos are coming. They're in the works where I explain everything. I treat it like a tutorial and a test um, to just try and help you guys find markers and papers that work for you so you're not disappointed. This is alcohol marker, uh, Copic and Shinhan Twin Touch and Prismacolor on Windsor & Newton marker paper. Not the pigment marker paper. They have two marker papers and they're kind of sim similarly named. Um, and the way these work is I have the inks underneath and I have the markers on top and I work with a light table because I don't want to have to take into account inks in addition to does the paper work with these markers. This is just to figure out if the markers could be used on this paper. Um, I'll try to figure out complementary inks at a later date. I'm just trying to like minimize the number of variables I have. Um, anyway, so I... I assemble them in Photoshop for the blog post 
but for the purposes of the review, it's fine as it is. And I want to show you guys because no, no one's going to see these for a while. And I already posted, I already posted some of the assembled ones on my Instagram, which is Natosoup at Instagram, and on my Tumblr, which is, you know, Natosoup.tumblr.com. Like that's me. It, if if Natosoup exists, that's probably me. Uh, the only not me is Snapchat. Uh, somebody grabbed it before me. I should have gotten on that. But um, words about this. They are not as cute in the assembled scan. There's something that like really flattens it out. Um, the originals are much cuter. This is alcohol marker on vellum. And these are a lot of a lot of work, by the way. Pigment marker on vellum. Water-based marker, uh, so her skin is, and it, it's actually cuter than it looks, there. Uh, her skin is Zig Brushables, her dress is Zig Art and Graphic Twin, and that makes a difference because brushables are a little drier than Art and Graphic Twin. Art and Graphic Twin is very juicy, um, so it gives like this more watercolor kind of a look. Let's see if I can, I guess not. Uh, it gives it kind of a watercolor look. Um, but these are not permanent once dry, so water or repeated application can reactivate it, whereas the brushables are waterproof once dry. You can blend them out while they're still wet with a Tombow ABT marker or a Marvie La Plume II uh, colorless blender. This is alcohol-based marker on crescent render paper, and um, as you can see, the inks are on it already because I had done some prior tests. This is water-based marker on just cheap tracing paper. Works similarly to the vellum. It has sort of a stained glass effect when uh, you like, when it's not layered on top of something like that. Now I have, um, I have, burr, 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 burr. I have, a water-based marker test for this, but the water-based markers ran all over the place, and I have other videos that show that, so I don't keep them together anymore, and I might reuse this line art. These are uh, pit pens, which are a water-based India ink marker that is permanent once dry that on translucent Yupo, and this worked out really well. I did this a few days ago, and I haven't had any issues with it's straying. And finally, this is pit pen. Oh, yeah. Pit pen on vellum. And that worked out really well, too. Very easy to blend. I really enjoyed doing it. So now you guys are caught up on what I've been working on and what I have completed so far, other than my Kara pages and my Gizmo Grandma pages, which are their own thing entirely. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed that little ske multi sketchbook tour. Um, I would super appreciate it if you left a comment and tell, told me what you want to see, um, if this format works for you, or if you prefer the, um, the scanned ones that I post on my blog. Um, if you enjoy this video and you want more like it, let me know. Uh, consider leaving a like, leave a comment, consider subscribing to my channel for even more content like this and those marker reviews that are coming up soon, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, I'll see you guys later. Have a good day, guys. Bye.